What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back, moving on to the next example in the unit one advanced functions test. So we are given this piecewise function here and we have to graph it and state if it's continuous. And if it's not continuous, we've got to state the points of discontinuity where it's going to be discontinuous. So as I've shown in the lecture videos on piecewise functions, hopefully you have watched those because I go through the graphing process in a little bit more detail. This one I'm going to go through a little bit quicker because I'm assuming you've watched those. I like to make tables of values for the different pieces. So let's start off with uh, this piece here on the um, left part of the domain, x is less than or equal to zero. So notice that the y values are just going to stay constant at negative seven. And so we know that for x values less than or equal to zero, so like zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, the y value is just going to stay as negative seven, like that. Another thing that's uh, important to note is that here, notice that we have x is less than or equal to zero, right? So add an x value of zero at that specific x value at that meeting point, the y value is going to be defined by negative seven. So this point right here, when we graph it, that's going to be a solid point, okay? If the equal sign was here instead, and this was just x is less than zero, then this point here, zero, negative seven, would be a whole. But because it was equaling that uh, x value is zero, then negative seven, that's the y value at that x value is zero. So we've got to make sure we put a solid um, point there. Now, for the second uh, piece, we got what? x squared plus four. Now that's going to be between zero and three. And even though it's not including, the zero and the three, right? Because it's not greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to three, you still want to put those values in the table because they're still gonna go up to those values. It's just at those values, there's gonna be a hole. So if we fill in the table here, uh, zero squared plus four, that's just four. One squared plus four is five. Two squared plus four is eight. Three squared plus four is 13, like that. And so, these values right here, the zero and four, that's gonna be a hole on the graph. Same thing here with that three and 13. That's gonna be a hole because again, it's not including that zero, it's not including that three. Now if those, if it was greater than or equal to, less than or equal to here, both of these points would be solid, right? So I find it helpful as you're making these tables to just label the solids and holes as you go along because then the graphing process is just going to be smoother and it's going to go faster as well. Okay, so now we got this piece negative x plus 16 when x is greater than or equal to 3. So let's pick some x values greater than or equal to 3. So like 3, 4, 5, 6, let's say. Um, and so negative three plus 16, that's gonna be what? Uh, 13. And then we're gonna have negative four plus 16, that's gonna be 12. This just has a slope of one. So these are just going down by one, right? Um, and then that's gonna be 10. And that's gonna keep going on forever after, right? And x value is seven, eight, nine, et cetera, all the way to infinity. Same thing here, this would keep going on forever. So like negative four, negative five, et cetera, et cetera, because it's all the x values less than or equal to zero. So that would go to negative infinity. But we'll just make a couple of points for each of these. And then remember, because it's defined at three here, right, at an x value of three, the y value is taking that function. So we know that this here is a solid point, right? And it's actually going to be the same point. Here. So we could already tell that at the x value of 3, because it has the same y value, the function is going to be continuous there. And then over here, because this y value at an x value of 0 is different than this y value at an x value of 0, the function is going to be discontinuous at that x value of 
zero. But even if they're going to be the same point, it's still just good practice and uh, a good habit to get into to just be labeling your solids and holes in this step when you're making the tables. Yo, yo, what's up? Quick little intermission here. Wanted to mention a few things quickly and we'll get right back into the question. First off, if you are getting value from this video, if you can please like the video and subscribe to my channel, it does help me out a lot. Number two, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description box and there is a link that will take you to my website, allthingsmathematics.com, where all my courses are organized so you can watch the videos in order and I'd recommend doing so because lots of concepts carry over from one video to the next. Also, for lots of the courses, at the end of the chapters, you can find tests that you can practice with and the tests have video solutions as well. Number three, if you feel like you need personalized help in tutoring, give me a shout. I currently tutor students seven days a week over Zoom, both high school and university students, one-on-one -on -one and in groups. You can text me, we can discuss availability and then we can book a session. My contact details are on my website. And lastly, feel free to forward the website to any of your friends who are also taking the course, who you feel can benefit from these videos as well. Hit me up on all my socials. It's all things mathematics for all of them. Back to the video, we go. And now all we uh, have to do pretty much is graph these points. And so from this point, we got the Cartesian plane over here. So let's just plot these uh, points let's start with this table so we got zero and negative seven so that's like over here now that's going to be a solid point right and then we have negative one negative seven now all of these on the x-axis they're going up by ones i just didn't want to write or uh, put too much numbers have too much stuff going on here so we could see the graph clearly so basically we got negative one, negative seven, negative two, negative seven, negative three, negative seven. It's basically just a horizontal line like that. That keeps going on forever to the left side to x values of negative infinity. Now this table, this next piece, we got zero and four. Now that's gonna be a hole, right? So we gotta make sure we put a hole right there. And then we have what? One and five, that's gonna be like here. And then we got two and eight, and that's like there. And then we got three and 13, that's like up here, but that's also going to be a hole, right? And so we just basically join these. This is basically gonna be a quadratic. That's looking like that, right? Half of the quadratic. Uh, and then next we would have this piece to graph. Now three and 13, that's actually the same point as here, as we mentioned. So we just have to fill in that dot. If this was a different y value, right? If it was like below, then the function would start there. But it's actually starting where the last piece or the last function ended off. So we just fill in that hole. And then we got what, four and 12. And that's gonna be like here, five and 11. And that's like here, and then six and 10. Right? It's just a downward sloping line like that, right? Negative x plus 16. And so that's basically how this function is going to look. And so where is the function going to be continuous? So if they were asking on what intervals is this function continuous? Well, we would say basically from negative infinity, from x values of negative infinity, all the way to zero, and then notice from zero, there's gonna be a break there, but then after zero to infinity, to positive infinity, it's gonna be continuous for the rest. So we would say from negative infinity to zero or from zero to positive infinity. So we wouldn't include that zero there because that's where the function is discontinuous. And so we would say the function is gonna be discontinuous at an X value of zero like that. Right, so that's pretty much the process that I personally take whenever I'm dealing with uh, piecewise functions. If we have to graph them, I like to make these tables. I like to label the solids and the holes depending on the intervals that's given in the actual function. And then you can just plot the points, you can graph it, and then you could see where is it gonna be continuous? Where is it gonna be? 
discontinuous. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.